All right, guys, welcome back to Tech Intern. Today, I want to try something different. People always ask how to get into these companies. And I want to try to convince you to not do an internship at one of these companies. Now, I'm not telling you to not work at the companies. I mean, I work at Microsoft, right? I can't really speak to that. Uh, but what I want to convince you is that there might be some better opportunities for your internships. There might be places where your time is better spent than worrying about Fang and Big Four. So the first question you kind of have to ask yourself is, why do you want to work at the big four? Like st step back, even maybe pause this video and ask yourself, like, why do I want to work at the big four? And that it, it might seem obvious. I wrote down some of the reasons here that I, I suspect you'll come up with um, because they're the ones I had when I was in university. And the first one is if I could work at one of the big four companies or Fang, then I made it right. Like I've proven to myself that I've made it. And the more I think about that, the more I think, made it where? Like, is that my career goal? Is is to, to work at Microsoft or is to work at Google? Is like, is that your whole career goal? And if it is, that can be reached before you even start your career. Like as an intern, you can reach your career goals. The reason I, I bring it up like this is because I think you have to take a step back and think about what your career goals are, which is not something people tell you to do often. Like you're so concerned about getting the next internship or, uh, you know, getting a full time job that you don't step back and think like in 10 years, where do I want to be or what, what do I want to be working on? And if that is generally like I want to be working on this very specific product at Google, then great. All the more power to you. Second thing I hear quite a lot, and I actually kind of agree with this one is uh, just to interact with many customers, like just to have the breadth of the company. Because at a, at a company like Google or Microsoft, so many people in the world use your code. And that's kind of a really cool thing in some essence, isn't it? Now, if you think about a company like Microsoft, we really have products that touch most people in the world. Like, l let's just say 7 billion people in the world. I think you have to consider, though, that even if the company has that breadth, your product won't necessarily have it. So you're not going to work on... Microsoft Word and write the entire thing. You're not going to write all of Microsoft Word. You might write like one specific component of Microsoft Word. And although there are a lot of customers of Microsoft Word, only 5% might use the thing that you actually implement and they might only use it once. Like, would you rather write code that 5,000 people use every day or would you write, rather write code that uh, 100,000 people use once? If you're working at a, a really cool startup, um, that you know, your code might actually run more times than if you just have it run for a lot more people. So it's something that that you need to consider. And the, the last thing I hear quite a lot is uh, to grow as a developer. And I also agree that this is definitely the case that at big companies, you're going to get mentorship, you're going to have a really great mentor. Uh, and he or she is going to be able to provide good feedback on your PRs, they're going to uh, help you with design decisions and all that great stuff. However, you are going to be working in parallel to the team. So the team is working on the real product and it, the team is working on new features and bugs. And then you're over here working in the same room as them, but on a completely self-contained project. Now, when I was at a startup, for example, like Toast, I was just a member of the team. I worked with the team. And I learned so much. I probably learned more in that internship than I did. I didn't close the window. Rookie. I probably learned more in that internship than I did in most of my other internships. So you have to consider the fact that you're going to be not working as part of the regular team. And if you'd rather get a taste for what full time is going to be like, I really highly recommend that, that you go to a startup. Now that I work at Microsoft, now that I'm here, I have more clarity into it. Now I, I look back and think, all right, what did I want to come to a top four company for? And a lot of these were the reasons. And I think it's just better for you guys to sit, sit back and actually just think about why you have motivations to go to a big company. If it's just about learning and growing as a developer, you might actually have a better time going to a startup. The last thing though that people say a lot is, and that definitely was the thing for me, is money. Definitely big four, big five, fang companies, whatever, pay a lot of money. So I understand that. However, there are other internships at maybe not 
top four companies, but other really big companies that pay even more. So for example, the, the highest salary I have ever heard for interns was actually, I believe at Salesforce, or was it Dropbox? So one of those companies was giving interns the option of 11K a month. You had to forego the stipend to get that, but that's still a really ridiculous amount of money. So if it really is a money thing, you know, don't think that the top four are the top payer. The, the, don't think that the top four are the top four paying because they're not necessarily. All right, guys, that's all I had for today. I really hope you enjoyed this episode and I can't wait to see you in the next episode.